Why did you decide to return to chalon sur saône and stay in the same place than 12 years ago? <coughs> well, 12 years ago, or actually it's more than 12 now, that was back in 1999, I was a 27-year-old recent graduate from art school and I had got this artist in residency place in a museum in, um, in central France, in chalon sur saône um, That was a decisive period for me because I was very young and uh, that was the first time I was really taken seriously as an artist. They believed in me and I think that that confirmed my future. Then years went on and um, I did stay in contact with the museum because it happened so that after this first experience in France I pretty much stayed there. Or let's say like one foot in France and the other one in Finland. Um, I went once in a while, maybe every once every two years to say hello and I had a rather big show there in 2006. But then when they asked me to, to participate in a project for uh, the national education, meaning that any school in France can participate and employ a photographer to work with the, with the students, with school kids. Um, they, they proposed for me to, to do one of these workshops in Chalon, and I said, okay, but I would like to stay in the same place, in the same monastery guest house where I was when I was a young artist. I can't really recall how I got this idea, but I somehow wanted to, to test myself, to see what happens when I go back to this place that was so important for me when I was young. I mean, having been in the city, I had not returned to the, to the dormitory, which was this old worn out building that used to be a monastery in the Middle Ages, but then had become like a guest house for, for like civil servants or theater groups who visited the city. And the recent, most recent renovation dated from, I would say, the 1970s. So I wanted to see how would it affect me to kind of go back into my roots or like jump into this time machine and do this human experiment on myself. How much would I remember and what kind of feelings would it evoke in me? Second question, how did it make you feel to return to visit and photograph the same places? I remember less than I, I thought I would. And I wasn't really nostalgic. In a way, it was a discovery to see that I don't miss that time in life, that kind of uncertainty and insecurity that's so kind of natural to a young artist. I realized that my life is elsewhere and I remembered surprisingly little when I was walking those streets. I remembered funny things, like I remembered the, the certain kind of strange sounding bird that would sing in the courtyard of the monastery. I remembered the fog. Um, a couple of people But what it did make me feel was, or let's say that the passage of time became really concrete. When I was looking at my old pictures and then the new ones that I was making in the same places, I could really see that things have changed. 
in myself and, and um, not so much in the surroundings because they still had not renovated the place. That was really funny, it was exactly the same scratches in the dwarves and, and so forth. But yeah, I was no longer the same person and that became really like kind of like concrete to me by doing this project. Third question, when photographing, do you think about the viewers of your work and of their reactions? No, I don't. When photographing, I don't think much of anything, actually. The process of taking photographs or making photographs is really very self-centered or self-oriented and hermetic in the sense that um, you, you put up the camera, you do all the technical gestures that are always pretty much the same. I always use the same few cameras, so I know them very well. It's like going into this kind of meditative gesturing and taking care of everything so that it functions technically. And then just kind of being as interiorized as possible. And I absolutely do not think about, I don't even think about how the image will look like. And, and I really don't think about what kind of reception it will get. Fourth question. How does your work relate to classical art? Well, obviously I have like this image bank in my head because I studied in an art school and I studied art history and I visit a lot of museums, especially when I was younger. I, I kind of took like um, museum visits as something that I really need to do in order to kind of like cultivate myself or, or get this like uh, iconographical knowledge that I think I, I thought I needed. And um, so I would say that particularly earlier in a series called The New Painting that was between the year 2000 and 2005, there my subject matter was actually, I would say, like art history or the like history of classical painting. I drew subject matters out of art history, I borrowed titles out of art history, I was influenced by compositional things or, um, yeah, like how to how to project the two three-dimensional world world into the two-dimensional picture plane, how the light is revealing the form, um, how to depict the human figure in a space. This kind of like very fundamental or very universal questions that have been uh, like puzzling artists throughout the history of art. Uh, I, I guess that's the way I relate to, to the, yeah, to the chain of, of my predecessors. Um, I guess I still do that kind of things. I don't do it so consciously. The way I'm working now, I tend to try to kind of let go a little bit of controlling too many things in my, in, let's say, in my recent work, I tried to become more relaxed with, uh, with like rules of how to make a good image. Um, but I, I, I do carry a lot of pictures in my head, I think, in the past. Fifth question, is it you you are photographing or is it a model? Well, this depends on what series I'm talking about. In the very beginning, it was me. Then for a long time, like throughout the new painting, model studies, artist and her model, it was not so much about me, as the titles also indicate. I talk about model studies because I want to, or I wanted to underline that even if you recognize that 
the artist is the model and the model is the artist. I'm not telling anything about myself. I'm there, you know, to pose, to, to be the subject matter or, or object of research, but it's nothing personal. Then what I'm doing now, or what I did like in the Douze ans après, or in another series I did parallel called Annonciation, and then what I've been doing since then, it's me again. So I guess it goes like it cycles as things go in life. And what I also notice is that it's the life that really guides the work. I don't decide that now I want to do autobiographical work and now I want to do something else. It's if something so important in life happens that I need to work on it, then it, you know, then it happens, then it goes through into my work. And at other times when it's like more calm, then I can concentrate on formal issues. I guess that's how it goes. And the sixth and last question, how do you see yourself in 12 years from now? Hmm. I think I still um, split my life between France and Finland. I think I will be working in moving image and in still image like I do now. I might be doing more writing. I hope I have wonderful exhibitions to expect for. I hope my dog is still alive. He is now two years old, but uh, those miniature dachshunds, I have heard that they can live pretty old. I've heard of one who, is, who was 18 years old, so I might still have him. Mm. I hope I'm healthy. I hope my family is healthy. I think I probably will not change as much as some other people do because the thing is I don't have children, I only have that dog. Um, and when one doesn't have children, it's as if one always stayed a little bit like a child oneself. I'm, I'm the youngest one in my line. I'm also the last one in my line. So that also gives a lot of degrees of freedom 